The table below has data from a 2009 Canadian Journal of Human Sexuality study. The data shows gender differences in response to partner influence and social expectation questions among students who had several who had ever had sexual intercourse. The sample for this study included only students who had ever had sexual intercourse, yielding 2,145 respondents after corrections. Okay, so they go on to tell you a little more about the data, but the final part of it is right here. It says, if one of the students, if one of the students is randomly selected, find the probability that the student has had sex with one, two, or three partners. So I've underlined a couple of key phrases here. The first one, this statement, if one of the students is randomly selected, indicates we're only selecting one subject from the study. We're looking for the probability that the student has had sex with one, two, or three partners. The word or here is important. The fact that you're only selecting one student and you have the word or, that indicates that you're dealing with the addition rule for probability. If you're dealing with the addition rule for probability, in most cases, in the elementary stats classes, you will just be dealing with you know, something like one or two, not one, two, or three. If it involves more than two things, more than two possible categories for this one student to land into, at that point, the rule becomes a little more complicated. And, uh, you know, if that comes up in an elementary stat class, you probably want to consider the fact that maybe these categories are mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive means that they don't overlap. Because if they don't overlap, it's very easy. We just would add the probability that person has had one partner to the probability of the person has two partners to the probability of the person has had three partners in the past. So that'll be a lot easier if we can just, you know, be sure that this is mutually exclusive, then we don't have to worry about all the overlapping cases, like the probability that it's one and two, the probability that it's one and three, the probability that it's two and three, the probability that it's one, two, and three, right? So we don't have to have to consider all those different cases. We don't have to. And we won't as long as we know that these are mutually exclusive. Remember, mutually exclusive means that you cannot belong to one category and the other at the same time. I think that's what we have here, right? Because our table says that, you know, number of partners, either one partners, two partners, or three partners. You cannot be a member of the three partner category and also be a number of member of the one partner category. Because people have either had sex with three people in their past or they've had sex with one person in their past. They can't be in both categories, right? Obviously, if you've had sex with three people in your past, you can't say that you've only had sex with one person in your past. So clearly these categories are mutually exclusive. They do not overlap. And so we can do the simpler form of the addition rule. Let's talk about that simple form then. Again, if we're doing the probability that a person has one partner um, or two partners or three partners, and they're mutually exclusive, then all we have to do is do the probability that they've had sex with one partner plus the probability that they've had sex with two partners plus the probability that they, they have had sex with three partners. And that's it. We work out those individual basic probabilities, we finish the problem. So let's draw a fraction for the first one, a fraction for the second, and a fraction for the third. What will this fraction represent? Well, it's going to be the number of subjects with one partner, right? With one partner in their past. This next one will be the number of subjects with two partners. And again, finally, number of, number of, subjects with three partners. And all of these are going to be over the total. Remember, for the basic addition rule, we're only taking one subject. We can keep this total the same for each fraction, right? OK, so at that point, we just have to count up the number of subjects with one partner. So I come over here, number of subjects with one partner, 1,068 total. So 1068 divided by the grand total, which is 2,145. Add to that to the number of subjects with two partners. That will be 389. Right? 389 divided by 2,145. And then finally, number of subjects with three partners. Number of partners three, the total is 226 people. And that's 2,145. Okay, now add those up, divide by the total, and you're finished. So it'll be 1068 plus 389 plus 226. Adding all the numerators together, putting them over the common denominator, 1683 divided by 2145. And when I do that division, I get 0.0. 
zero point seven eight five, or basically seventy eight point five percent. That's it.